What's up, YouTube? Ryan here. Welcome back to 1517 Films, where in every episode I'm always contending for the faith once for all, delivered to the saints. And today, I'm pointing my finger at my own denomination. Today, I'm going to pick on myself. I'm going to have a few choice words for the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. That's right. Let's get to, let's, if you listen to nothing else, dear Missouri Synod, listen to this. L-C-M-S. Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. I can't do that without putting my pinky out. Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. What's that L stand for? That L stands for Lutheran. Okay. The acronym LCMS stands for Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Now you all uh, might be asking, Ryan, what, what, why? Why are you making a video called L is for Lutheran? Well, it's because uh, there's some rotten fruit hanging on the tree of the Missouri Synod. And I think I've put my finger on the root of the, the Synod that's causing that. And it's, mm, if I say this, is the Vox Adpocalypse going to come for me? The root of the problem is that the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod is starting to self-identify as transdenominational. What do I mean? They're embracing non-denominational practices and saying we can have Lutheran substance... <laughs> with non-denominational practice. Halt! And I have lived this life, okay? I came out of the ELCA. ELCA formerly having stood for Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Now it stands for everything Luther cautioned against. I came out of a liturgical ELCA church, went into the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, but went, went into one of those praise band churches. The lack of biblical discernment and the fact that they chose entertainment over edification, uh, I was not being fed the word of God, and so I strayed off and almost became a oneness Pentecostal, denying the Trinity and stepping outside of the Christian faith. Fortunately, God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, through the preached word at the Concordia system, and years and years and years of studying theology at Concordia University, brought me back and made me a confessional Orthodox, liturgical, Lutheran, proud to be a member of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. But the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, like many other denominations, is seeing what mainline American Protestantism is doing, and it has bought into the lie that we can save more souls if we make church entertaining. That is not True. Jesus did not say that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church so long as you keep with the times, man. That's not what Jesus said. Lutherans have this funny habit where we look at what mainline American Protestantism is doing and we go, you know, I wonder if we do that, if we'll get more butts in the pew. I mean, Lutherans, we really do care about, about preaching the gospel to people, about convicting people's consciences of their sins, and then telling them Jesus has paid for that sin. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. You can go free and you will be in eternity with Christ after you die. We're really interested in getting the gospel out to people, but in order to do that, we've bought into the lie that we have to engage in worshiptainment. We, we, we can't have our divine service anymore, our God instincts. Uh, I think I butchered that. Uh, that's the German word for God's service. God, and that literally means God's service to us. That's what church is on Sunday. It is God serving us. It is God giving us his word. It is God giving us his absolution upon our confession. It is God giving us himself in the body and blood of his son at the Lord's Supper. And in return, we offer our thanks, our praise, our offering. It's, it's a back and forth. It's a liturgy. It's a responsive liturgy, but God always starts it. And it's all about God's service to us. Now, the bad fruit on the tree of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod is this this uh, Lutheran substance with evangelical practice. That's the bad fruit. The root of it, well, the root of it is 
Lutherans today aren't being taught why. We're not being taught why we have this liturgy. We're not being taught what this liturgy confesses. We're not being taught what this liturgy gives. We're just being told that's grandpa's church. That's bad. We got to start a new church. We got to do something different. And the Missouri Synod, unlike evangelicals that chopped down the 2,000-year tree of the church to plant a new one, just decided to start decorating their church, their church tree to make it look more like the evangelicals. However, the root has now gone bad in the Missouri Synod, and now the fruit that we are bearing is rotten. What fruit are we bearing? Well, let's take the upcoming National Youth Gathering as an example. The National Youth Gathering page for the LCMS posted that there's this big praise song based on one of the psalms that they're going to be singing every day at National Youth Gathering. Sadly, uh, the Facebook group Orthodox Lutheran Fellowship, which I rather enjoy for their comedic value, uh, decided to troll them. Uh, inappropriate behavior, go back to your catechism, read Luther's explanation of the Eighth Commandment about bearing false witness against your neighbor, and we'll talk, okay? But the National Youth Gathering, rather than receiving the comments or letting them stand and just being like, well, yeah, there's going to be opposition, they started deleting them. Nope, we're not going to tolerate this. Nope, we don't want to listen. Nope, we don't want to hear your concerns. Both of them are wrong. But I get where Orthodox Lutheran Fellowship as a Facebook page is coming from. The people who admin that page know the history and the heritage. They know the reason. They know the why. They know the gifts of the divine service. They know that God is giving gifts when we worship him on the Lord's Day on Sunday. They know this, and they're fighting for this, and they're advocating for this. And so am I. That's partly what this whole channel is about. 15, 17 films is about proclaiming the truth in a church of anti-truth. That's what it's about. Mainline American Protestantism has gone way off the rails. And the Lutherans, they've really got something. We've really got something. We've got years of doctrine. We've got, and hashed out before we were even Lutherans. Luther didn't go, I'm going to start a new church. He went, look, this is what the Bible says. This is how the ancient church fathers have always interpreted it. This is how they've always practiced it. I want to do that again. That's who Lutherans are. We're not the people who said, ah, oh, off with you, Rome, and we're going to do our own thing. Those were the Protestant reformers uh, that did that. Uh, so Lutherans really have something good, and I know that they have something good because I've been out in that barren wasteland of American evangelicalism. I mean, it's, it's so bad that I said something on Facebook that uh, Christ has declared the church is an ark. Contemporary worship advocates have replaced it with a banana boat. Sure, a banana boat's more fun, but is it seaworthy in a storm? I was being funny, being snotty, but I was really trying to drive home a point. Is worship as entertainment, as opposed to worship because it's efficacious, going to withstand the trials and tribulations of this world? The answer, I think, is no. You know, someone commented back, oh yeah, it is, let's praise God together, and I... Couldn't help myself. I shared a picture from the movie Jaws. <laughs> Where the shark came up and it was eating the kids right off the banana boat. I'd rather be in the ark <laughs> than on a banana boat because in the ark, I'm safe from the dangers of a fallen and sinful world. So this, this national youth gathering thing that happens is an attempt to get kids involved in their church. And that's great, but it's bad fruit. The desires are good, but the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So rather than, I don't know, being Lutheran, the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, like many other major and old denominations, is starting to self-identify as trans-denominational. You think the Vox Apocalypse is going to ban my channel now that I said trans-denominational and self-identify? Anyways, so, 
How do we fix the problem, Ryan? Are you just going to sit here and rant at us about what's wrong with the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod? How they're not behaving like Lutherans and how they are got this big event once every four years where they just put on a rock concert for Jesus? You know what my problem is with that? Is it's entertainment. And you can go back to the old Worldview Everlasting YouTube channel that I told you about. And they did a two-parter on this where a kid at the LCMS National Youth Gathering was interviewed about what was going on over there. And he was just speaking his experience. And you know what that experience is when you dissect it? Pagan mysticism. If we give children Christianity as entertainment and not substance... If we give them a banana boat instead of placing them into the ark of Christ's church, when the waves get too big, they're going to fall off that boat. Or they're just going to get bored with it and they're going to leave. But if you teach them about the ark that the church really is, and you teach them why they're in the ark, they can learn to appreciate what we as Lutherans have in our doctrine and our practice. Here's how we solve this problem. We don't do what Orthodox Lutheran Fellowship did. We don't go trolling the baby boomers at the National Youth Gathering, although that's really fun. <laughs> I love trolling baby boomers because they've pretty much destroyed everything they've put their hands on. But we start in the home. This is how we solve the problem. We start in the home. We teach our children how to pray. Take a look at my video about evening prayer. This is how I teach my children to pray out of the catechism. When we sit down at the kitchen table, we pray, as Luther instructs, out of the catechism. When they have questions while we're at church, I don't always tell them, shh. Sometimes I'll answer their question if it's an appropriate place in the liturgy for a conversation. And they have questions at home. I answer those questions. I tell them why. We're doing something. I remember um, when William was little, he figured out while we were in church on Sunday that something big was happening up front because everybody's attention was focused up front anyways. And all these people were going up front and they were kneeling and the pastor was coming by with a plate with wafers on it and a chalice. What's going on? Good question, buddy. Jesus is up there feeding his sheep with his very body and blood. Let's be reverent because we're literally witnessing a miracle right now. Oh, cool, Daddy. Or uh, when he saw me having a glass of wine a, a couple of weeks ago, uh, and he just said, is that Jesus' blood? This cup of wine, buddy? No, this is just a cup of wine. Daddy's just having a cup of wine. Um, the, the, the wine at church, that's Jesus' blood. Why is that Jesus' blood? Well, is the water that comes out of our sink your baptism, buddy? No, it's just water. Uh, is the water combined with the words and promises of Christ, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Is that your baptism? Yeah. So water combined with God's word is, and he told me it's baptism. And I said, wine combined with the promise of God's word is what Jesus says it is. It's communion. It's the Lord's Supper. It's the Eucharist. He's learning why. And I'm explaining the liturgy to him. So the battle for the heart of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, the battle to, to repair the damage done to the root so that we stop bearing bad fruit, the answer is in the home. To teach the faith to your children. And the last thing, the best way to help your children understand the importance of being a Christian, the importance of being Lutheran in thought, word, and deed, is that they see it's important to you. My children are very patient, even though they're children, they're very patient about Christianity. They're very patient about being a church, and they understand it's important. Why? Because I tell them, no, because they can see that it's important to me. And if it's important to daddy, it must be important. The solution to the problem is not to troll the baby boomers, fun as that may be. The solution to the problem that the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod is having in self-identifying as transdenominational is to teach the Lutheran faith to your children in the home. Uh, we have in my church, I'll tell you this and then I'll let you go. At my church, we have this book. It's about this thick supposed to be the last Sunday of the month, we pull out this book of, of praise songs and upbeat garbage 
uh, that we sing this past Sunday was that Sunday. <laughs> we sang all sorts of stupid songs. Um, and I noticed, actually, there were two hymns that we sang on that Sunday, and the congregation was much ro- much more robust in their singing when it was the hymns, and it, it, was, it was just dumb uh, when they were trying to muddle through these stupid praise songs. Um, and I've talked to my pastor. I actually boycotted my own church for an entire summer last year after we sang Shine, Jesus, Shine at Pentecost, a garbage song, a garbage song. And my pastor... Being a good pastor, noticed my absence and reached out to me. And I said, well, I'm going to, a, uh, to another Lutheran church for the summer. I just can't take this Protestantism in my Lutheran church in Missouri Synod. And we sat down and we talked. And he's, he's, in a, he's, in a, he's in a weird place because he has people like me saying, we need to be more confessional and more liturgical and more Lutheran. And he agrees. He's all, just as many as there are of me saying that, in the congregation that I'm at, there's just as many saying, hey, we need to do the whole praise band thing. We need to get a rock band. We need to be more hip and with the times. Poor man stuck in the middle. And the solution that he and I came to was that I should always advocate for what I love. I should always speak to members of the congregation about why I love our liturgy. And he does the same. Every opportunity in a Bible study at church, he has to point them back to the beauty of our liturgy, he does it. He's teaching them with patience. He's advocating for what he loves instead of condemning what he hates. That's the answer to the problem. And he encouraged me, if I want to solve this problem, if I want to restore the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod to what it ought be, my responsibility is to teach this faith to my children and to teach them to cherish it. So dear Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, L stands for Lutheran, and it's about damn time you act like it. Take it from someone who was not always a Lutheran. I'm not a cradle Lutheran. I'm a new Lutheran. A new Lutheran. I'm a new Lutheran. Well, about, I don't know, 10 years now, but still, I'm a new Lutheran, not a cradle Lutheran. And I'm telling you, as someone who's been on the outside and has now found himself home in the Missouri Synod, what you're doing is hot garbage and it's going to hurt souls. You're going to lose your youth if you keep doing this. There's a joke. It's been a joke in the Lutheran church for a long time. You want to know how you, how you, you get bats out of the bell tower in your church? You confirm them. We lose our youth after we confirm them because we're just going through by rote what confirmation is as a ritual. We're not using it as an opportunity to help them cherish the faith that has been handed down from one generation to the next. Dear Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, L stands for Lutheran. Until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won by Jesus' vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins.